<laughs> let's do this. Let's introduce the, the, the highest technician I could possibly get from this. Timo, man, I know you worked hard. You were working hard last night on this presentation. Uh, it's always a pleasure to work with you. Uh, let's kick this thing off and turn it on over to you. Welcome, my man. There you go. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Gary. That was a great introduction. So now let's move along uh, to the uh, MTX Editor software. Uh, as Gary mentioned, my name is Temo Figueroa, and I'm with uh, Yamaha uh, Technical Marketing Group. So uh, with that said, uh, let's go into uh, a couple of things that we're going to talk about today. Some of the technologies that uh, we will cover. So uh, let's uh, move along. <clears throat> So we all remember uh, this guy right here, uh, back in the day, the analog scene, how we had a bunch of different wires and cables and everything connected. And this is how you would connect all your devices. Well, now in the era of the digital age, <clears throat> we're able to connect and make all our connections now digitally through one cat five cable. So we have a couple solutions available for you. Uh, and I'm covering this because this is some of the technologies we're gonna talk about later in the presentation. So for example, uh, instead of having this mess right here, uh, we're gonna have, uh, we offer the YDIF, uh, which is both digital uh, in the YDIF and the Dante side. So the YDIF is Yamaha's digital interface. And that gives you the ability of interconnecting all your Yamaha devices uh, in the CIS line together be at one cat five cable. So instead of having a bunch of wires everywhere, you're just gonna have one cat five cable that's gonna connect all your devices together. So this is great for in rack solutions. So if you have all your devices and they're in one single rack, this is the best solution for you. Um, again, one cat five cable to connect, interconnect all the devices. Uh, you have 16 channels of audio that travel down and back up. So as you can see, basically this forms like a ring and you have all your audio going through that loop. Uh, on the other side, uh, if you do have an application where it's a wide area network, let's say if you have a big campus, you have a, a big area that you got to cover and you can't necessarily have your amplifiers in the same location with the processor, then we recommend going with a Dante based system. Uh, Dante is IP based, it's flexible, expandable, and it's best for long distance solutions. So for example, if uh, you got to run uh, in a huge university campus, maybe it's a mega church, something like that, where you don't want to run that long of a copper line, you can also run a fiber line. So it gives you a lot of flexibility and added expandability. So that said, uh, we're going to cover the products that we're actually uh, going to use today. So uh, first up is the uh, MTX5, which is our fixed configuration processor. Uh, many of you might have used it, might not, I'm not sure, uh, but it's a great box. <clears throat> uh, we also have another one, which is uh, YDIF based, which is the uh, MTX3. So this one here that we're using is the MTX5. And something I want to note is the D in the model number is actually the means that it's uh, Dante enabled. Uh, this one against fixed configuration processor, uh, 34 in, 16 out. You have two stereo inputs. Now this is key right here to uh, keep in mind because uh, we're going to be referencing this throughout the presentation. But uh, basically you have your two stereo inputs on the back. Uh, you have uh, eight mic line inputs. Uh, these are like Phoenix connector based. You have eight mic line outputs, which again are Phoenix connector based. You have a Dante port built in. You have a primary and secondary port, and you also have the wide if uh, ports built into the unit. Uh, DCP connects, which is basically our uh, digital control plate that plays into the back of the unit uh, directly. You have uh, 16 GPI ports on the MTX5, where you have eight on the MTX3. Uh, and then you also have the option to add uh, external power supply. So in case if you do have a, a situation where you have to make sure that this unit stays on, uh, other than using a UPS, which you can use, or you can use an external uh, battery or something like that. Uh, some other added features, uh, you have an MY card slot on the back. This is great if you need to expand on the system. We have a ton of different MY cards off of our website. So uh, if you have an application where let's say you need to add in a couple more analog ports, we have an MY card. We also have an expansion box. We have a ton of different cards to fit whatever solution you need to uh, apply with. We also have an SD card slot that you can put uh, canned messages. You can also put um, specific music. Let me uh, maybe it's specific music to the to the location, something like that. Uh, 
that's what the SD card is for. You can put whatever you want. And uh, we've tried, I think, with 16 and 32 gigabit cards, and it's worked OK. Uh, you can also do a remote control via dedicated uh, software uh, with uh, like RTI, Xtron, Crestron, stuff like that. I'll get into that in, uh, later down in the presentation. And also uh, convenient DSP functions like Dan Dugan Auto Mixer, uh, priority ducking, and feedback suppressor, which we'll get into in a bit. Also, we're going to be using in our system uh, today is our XMB4140. Uh, this is a four-channel digital app. It's a YDIF based. Uh, it has four outputs. So you have uh, your speaker outputs here. You also have an analog input. So if you want to use this amp as a standalone, uh, you could do that as well. The great thing about this amp is that you can use it in either a low impedance or high impedance mode, and it's all off the same amplifier. Uh, basically, you just flip some of these dip switches right here, and that'll tell the amplifier what kind of load it's going to see on the terminal. So uh, this is great for applications where maybe output A and B, if you want to use your 70 volt speakers, and output C and D, maybe you have a pair of surface mount speakers, or you have a subwoofer or something like that. So it's very, very flexible, very easy to use. Uh, detachable IEC cord, which is huge, so you don't have a big, giant, ugly wall wart uh, taking up space in the rack. And the front panel has a ton of useful features. Uh, you can mute the channels from here. You can uh, raise or lower the level from your individual channels here. Also, there's a display on here that tells you, like, if there's an issue with the amplifier, let's say if you have a... Uh, Maybe you tap the speaker settings uh, off and uh, you have too many uh, speaker, uh, a mismatch in output power. This will basically tell you, hey, if there's a problem, channel A, check it out. And it helps reduce in um, troubleshooting time as well. So uh, with that said, uh, we also have a few different models available. So if you do need a Dante based amplifier or if you need additional uh, amplification channels, we have four models in the four channel. We have a 4280 and a 4140. The 4280 means it's four channels by 280 watts. The 8140 means it's uh, eight channels by 140 or 4140, which is uh, four channels by 140 watts. So uh, all of them have the same features on the eight channel and on the four channel. Uh, again, the only difference is uh, if you wanted to use either YDIF uh, based uh, input or if you wanted to do a Dante based input. So that's the only difference. And all the amplifiers are, ca are capable of doing 70 volt or uh, low impedance on the same chassis. So you don't have to uh, worry about having a separate skew or different skew or anything like that. So. Another great piece that we're using in our system is going to be the um, DCP wall plate. I'm sorry, the SWR2100. Uh, we are using today a 2100P 5G, uh, which is five ports. The great thing about these switches is that they come pre-configured or optimized for Dante use right out of the box, which is great. Uh, one thing on networked audio that you don't want is you don't want your ports shutting off on you. So this is set up already pre-configured with all those uh, functions turned off. So that way all your ports are always on, always active, always transmitting data. So that way you don't have a loss of signal. That's very important when you're transmitting audio through uh, a digital uh, format like this. Uh, both uh, switches, we have a five port and a 10 port. <clears throat> both switches feature a detachable IEC cord, which is huge because a lot of the switches in this area, uh, the smaller ones have a big giant wall work that take up space in the rack. So this is great. This, you don't have to worry about having a big ugly cable connected on the back. Uh, solid chassis design, solid metal, solid state. There's no built-in fans. So if you do have a situation where you need to use this in, let's say, a quiet environment, a recording studio, a school, a lecture hall, something like that, uh, it's solid state, so you don't have to worry about any uh, external noise. Uh, you also have PoE uh, power off the unit as well, which you have 30 watts per port or a combined uh, 70 watts per uh, total for the whole device. So, um, and that's, uh, again, two different models. We also have a rack mount solution as well. So if you wanted to rack mount the switch or uh, mount it on the wall, you have different options for that. Plus, there's also a Yamaha LAN monitor software that you can download, which I'll get into uh, towards the end of the presentation. But uh, you can download to just have a bird's eye view of your network, what's going on, what's connected. So it's really, really great piece of software. 
digital control panels. Uh, we have our DCP4S, uh, which is four buttons. We have the 1V4S, which is four buttons, one knob. We have the DCP4V4S, which is four knobs, four buttons. You can connect up to uh, eight of these panels, and it could be an, any mixture of them. Uh, it could be all the same uh, DCP4S, or you can have them all mixed up, so it doesn't really matter. And uh, you can also uh, have an easy connection of just one Cat5 cable, so you don't have to run an external uh, power or anything like that. It's all done via uh, the Cat5 from RS-485 connection. So it's very simple. Uh, you can program these to do a slew of different uh, functions, which I'll get into in a little bit. Basically, uh, what we're gonna do today is this is gonna be our system right here. Uh, two zone, a uh, couple inputs, uh, and a DCP wall plate uh, connected by an SWR2100. So this is gonna be our setup for today. But keep in mind that this isn't just for a specific, uh, like let's say if you just have one conference room or if it's just a large area, you can use this application almost anything. Uh, with an MTX3, which is the little brother to the five, it's just a, a one rack space, the same features, same inputs, outputs. The only difference is it doesn't have Dante, but uh, it does have YDIF, so you can connect uh, multiple YDIF amplifiers if you need to. So if you have a small application where it could be a small restaurant, a uh, small boutique, uh, something like that, that's you know, uh, smaller scale, you have that option. If you need more uh, output zones and stuff like that, then you can go with MTX5. But again, the possibilities are endless. Uh, so if you're doing like a small application or a large application like a casino, uh, it could be a hotel location. It could also be like a conference room, boardroom, uh, councilman chambers, stuff like that, uh, courtrooms. Uh, you also have either large scale or small scale uh, restaurants. So again, the possibilities are endless. They're, they're not limited to just a specific uh, type of industry or anything like that. Uh, conference rooms, it could be also uh, doctor's offices, uh, anything like that, uh, that you need DSP, this is perfect for you. So with that said, uh, let's get into our software. Uh, so at this point, I'm not sure if anybody has any questions. Uh, I don't see anything on the uh, chat screen. So. Uh, if you do have questions, uh, don't be afraid, type them in and uh, we'll try to either pause in a break or we'll try to answer them as they come in. So again, if uh, you have any questions, just feel free to, don't hesitate to ask, all right? Hey, so, Camo, yes. uh, this is your colleague, Phil. Um, I don't know if other folks are seeing that, but at my end, I'm not seeing a full view of your screen. So is there, um, um, I know once you start going into showing the software, um, that could be, uh, okay. Useful. Thank you, sir. Let me okay. see there why. All right. You guys seeing my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm not seeing the little uh, thing around the, the screen like usual. All right. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I guess if you scroll back and forth, you'll be able to see everything. I just thought that would be important for uh, for when you get going. Yeah. All right. Great. Thanks, Phil. Uh, okay. So, uh, so now as long as everybody can see my screen now, which is great. Um, this is basically the software. So when you open the software, you're going to get a little dialog box that's going to pop up that's going to say network setup. So this is crucial because this is going to tell the computer and the software how it's going to communicate with our devices. So right now I'm plugged into a Luxel switch, I'm sorry, Luxel uh, 3150 uh, DHCP router and I'm connected to an SWR2100 and I'm hardwired into the switch. So that's how I'm seeing all my connections right now. So what I want to do is if you notice that that already pops up with an IP address, that's the uh, controller, the connector, uh, the card that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to click on OK. If you were to go on Wi-Fi, then you can just select if you have your Wi-Fi adapter, wh whatever way you're going to try to communicate the device, you just got to make sure you select it here. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see the devices on your uh, project tab. So uh, we're going to click OK because that's uh, I'm letting the software and the computer know I'm going to communicate via this way. So if you notice already, we have a couple of devices there, which is uh, what our setup is. Uh, we already have these on our network. So after that network uh, tab pops up, you're going to get a device configuration wizard. And this is basically where you're gonna tell uh, the software what components are gonna be in your system. So uh, let's continue on. 
So from here at this point, you can label your system name, uh, whatever you want. So if you want it to be, uh, let's say it's, uh, I don't know, uh, we're gonna do a restaurant today. So let's just call it uh, Bob's, uh, Bob's Grill. Or actually, uh, I got a better one. Dennis's uh, Surf and Turf. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll call that Dennis's Surf and Turf. There we go. So then we're gonna hit next. And now we're gonna select what devices we're gonna have in our setup. Now this is very important because this is gonna determine what processors we're gonna have on our system, amplifiers, uh, they can either be YDIF connected. Usually you're not gonna be using this section, the analog connected, uh, and then uh, you're gonna use the Dante, and if you're using an MCP1, which is the control plate. So in this case, we're gonna be using one MTX5, and we're gonna be using one XMB4140. And uh, at this point, uh, these are all the devices we're gonna use. Now, uh, on the bottom, there's a little chart that tells you, for example, you can do up to four processors in a system. Uh, YDIF total, you can do up to eight devices. Uh, if you can use any one of these combinations of uh, either an XMV amplifier, processor, Rio, TO box, which are the uh, input output boxes that we have. Um, it also gives you a number of like the PGM1, the paging stations, project total, you can use up to 80 devices in our project. So it gives you a lot of, uh, a lot of space there. Uh, then we're gonna hit next. Now this is also important. So this is gonna be our unit ID. So the way that the processor uh, communicates to the computer is by unit ID. So if let's say if I was off site and I was building this file from my office, so I would just go and select uh, something else and I already know I'm gonna I'm gonna set these up this way now as a rule of thumb um, you can start uh, everything by default comes out as one but this means that your IP address is going to be 192.168.0.1 now the problem with that is that you have a lot of devices that come by default as 01 as their uh, as their IP address so if you set your devices on your uh, CIS system with the same uh, 0102 you might have an issue with uh, duplicate IPs so as for me as a as a rule of practice what I usually like to do is I usually like to start all my my projects at at least 10 so that way from 10 11 12 13 you can number them that way uh, again if you're off-site and you're at your office you can put in whatever you want you don't even have to uh, do that but as you notice I put in uh, XMB uh, unit ID 10 and I got an error already so that kind of is like a, a checks and balances to let you know hey uh, you already have something in that ID range so uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna select that as number 11 now since my computer is already seeing the device here it's already gonna pop up in this menu uh, with that uh, unit ID and the uh, device that it is so that's how you know you're already communicating to it uh, then we're gonna hit next and this little window here is gonna pop up and it's gonna show you basically how you should set your unit IDs with the rotary knobs on the back and the dip switches. Now the dip switches here, uh, using them together, for example, on a processor, if you have one down, that means it's a time 10 multiplier. So if you have this set to one, the little rotary knob to one, this is gonna be 11. If you have one and two down, if you have two down, it's in the 20 range. If you have one and two down, it's in the 30 range. Uh, so it'll be 30 and then let's say if you do uh, A, B, C, D, so it'd be 30 A, 30 B, so forth and so on. So that's how the unit ID system works. Uh, then it's going to show you a little diagram. If you have a Dante en enabled device, then that's going to plug into the switch. If you have a YDIF enabled device, then you connect the control port to the switch because that's how you're going to gain control of your devices. So uh, then we're going to hit next. This section here is if you are running uh, an expansion box we have uh, two available we have an exi8 which is input eight eight channels and then we have an ex08 which is output eight channels so this here is going to tell the processor or the ring what order that YDIF or the audio is going to flow into so for example, everything's flowing into the MTX5, so it's gonna go from the top down. If you were to place it this way and you're using YDIF devices, you're not gonna get any audio because all the audio is basically traveling into the, the devices are expecting it to see the audio on from the top down. So we wanna make sure that this is correct. You don't have to touch it, it's by default,
defaults already if you have one processor, so it's already there. But um, that's basically how we set that up. Uh, then we're gonna hit next. Uh, if we will have an MY card, uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, we have all of these different ones available to you, so you can select that. Uh, we're gonna click next. This is where we're gonna assign a DCP wall plate. Uh, again, this is uh, any one of our uh, DCP connected wall plates, which is this one here. So I'm going to select that uh, as my DCP 1B4S. And we can also label this. Uh, so we have multiple DCPs, then we can label that as well. So this one, uh, let's say we wanna have this one in the patio area because what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a dining room and a patio area. So, and we only have one DCP wall plate right now to control. So uh, if you have multiples on the back of the switch, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there is uh, some little dip switches there. So if you have multiple devices, you guys uh, would assign the dip switches on the back of the DCP wall plate. So uh, again, these are basically, think of them as little soldiers or soldiers and the processor is the, the, the sergeant or the general. And it's gonna tell each one what command it's gonna do. If you have a DCP wall plate that has the same dip switch setting, they're basically gonna do the exact same thing, both of them. So just keep that in mind. So after this, uh, we're gonna select finish. Uh, you don't always have to click yes on this one, but just for this uh, presentation, we're gonna click yes. And basically what that's gonna show us is it's gonna show us a little uh, handy paper that's gonna show how the uh, wiring should be connected and all your dip switch settings, same ones I just showed you right now. So that way we know exactly how the, uh, the wiring goes, how the dip switch settings are. If we had other devices, it would show here how the Y diff loop is gonna be connected. Basically, you go out from the processor into the next device. If we had multiple devices, it would be out in, out in, and then the last device would be out and then into the processor. And that's how the Y diff loop works. If we're doing Dante devices, then all of them just go to the primary port to the switch. So um, you can also choose to print this as well. Um, so we just close that. So now this is gonna take us into uh, our working tab. Um, so far, uh, I don't know if there's any questions uh, so far, uh, we don't. So again, uh, if you have any questions at any point, just uh, you know, give a shout out and we'll try to get them addressed. So at this point here, uh, we have our devices uh, and our computer is seeing them. And if you notice the little green dot right here, that means that we're connected but we're not online to the device yet. So we're seeing it, everything's uh, showing up and uh, we're seeing all the devices. Um, now this little gray box right here allows you to flash the unit. So this, uh, for example, if I have my devices connected, I don't think you guys can see them, but they're in the background. But if I click this box right here, all the lights are gonna flash on the front of the, the unit. So uh, for example, my DCP, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm gonna flash this one, all the lights flash on that one as well. So that one's uh, indicating that <clears throat> um, connected and it's seen the device. So then uh, we're gonna go into the actual mixing part uh, or the actual uh, functions of the processor. So this is where you're gonna do the core of your setup. So. Uh, for example, from the top down, uh, if you look at it, if you're used to, or if you ever use an analog mixing board, if you look at it from that perspective, it's kind of the same way. Uh, the surface, uh, or I'm sorry, the controls were kind of set up to be similar to what a uh, digital board is. So if you guys are familiar with the Yamaha boards, uh, this is a similar setup or a, a editor for one of our consoles this is almost the same thing. So the first tab from the top down, uh, we're gonna see is our input patch. Now, this is basically a representation of anything that you can plug into the device. So our inputs are gonna be our physical inputs on the back of the unit, those Phoenix connectors that I was showing you guys earlier. Uh, this is gonna be our stereo ins, our SD card, our YDIF patching. So if we did have an expansion box, this would be the spot where we would connect that to. Uh, our Dante port, if we were using a Dante enabled device, we would tell it right here that it's gonna get the patching from there or any one of our slot input imports, our inputs, sorry. 
Uh, you can also do a couple different ways to patch it. You can either just click on each individual one or you can also click on the little arrows right here. And as you can see, you can also select one of the channels from here and you can click on the patch. Now, one thing I want you guys to keep note is when I'm using the internal, the inputs, if I click on one of these, uh, you're going to have head amp control because basically those head amps are built into uh, the actual processor. Uh, what does that mean? I'll show you in a minute. So once we uh, set this up, if we're going to do something different, then you go there. Uh, if not, then we go straight to the next one, uh, which is our, in our head amp control. This is going to be where our gain adjustments are done. So if you do have uh, like an external microphone, uh, if you have a device that needs phantom power, something like that, you can turn that on and off from this panel right here. And you can adjust your levels. Next one, uh, basically all of these are gonna be tied together uh, and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, this is gonna be our dynamics. So if you notice any one of these that I click on, it's gonna be the same tab if I click on one of these. So there's a couple of different ways that you can get into this screen. Uh, you can either select the tab or you can just click on any one of these boxes. So um, now, for example, if we're uh, connecting a microphone, uh, microphone basics 101, you always want to have a high pass filter on any mic that you connect. Why? Because that's going to make the difference between sounding like this, where you really can't tell, and sounding like this more intelligible. So that is always a, a rule of thumb. Anytime you have a microphone, you always want to do a high pass filter. So on this, you have a high pass filter built in, uh, just select the on and the off button. You can also select the frequency uh, that you wanna adjust. Uh, so let's say we'll just leave it at about 90 Hertz. Uh, and that's a good frequency to set it to. You also have digital gain that you can uh, adjust uh, if you need more input, it'll do it digitally. Uh, and then this also reverses the phase on a, on a input. So if you needed to, uh, you have an EQ, you also have a parametric EQ that you can do their shelf, you can do a parametric band. Let's say since this is a microphone and maybe something just odd about this mic, maybe it's feeding back or something like that. Um, if you do live sound, you know that uh, annoying ringing sound. So what you can do is you can grab one of these points, uh, either drag it down and then we can adjust the cue, we can narrow the cue, and now just by left mouse click, and now we can go and we can select any one of the frequencies that are find the frequency that's offending. So it's a very, very handy tool. Also, if maybe your input doesn't sound too good, something's off with it, you can make EQ corrections right here. Uh, you have a gate and a compressor. Uh, again, just as simple as uh, on and off. And if you turn these on, when you go to the main tab, uh, you're going to notice that now these are highlighted, whereas when they're dark or black, then that means that they're off. So that's an easy way to tell if uh, these uh, are enabled or not. Uh, feedback suppressor, this is huge because this allows you to notch out those frequencies because there's not always going to be a trained operator on site when they're uh, using any one of the microphones or something like that. So. You can use a uh, feedback uh, suppressor either in a fixed mode, meaning that if it's a mic that's like on a podium that's never gonna move, then this would be where you use the fixed mic uh, feedback suppressor. But if it's dynamic mic, meaning it's like a handheld and the person's gonna be walking around everywhere, then you do the dynamic one. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna, once it detects a feedback frequency, it's gonna put a notch filter in every single one and a little filter uh, number will pop up here. So uh, that's what that's for. Uh, auto gain compensation, if you're using, uh, let's say for a restaurant, you can also adjust, uh, you plug in a microphone, any microphone, doesn't have to be anything special, but you can plug a mic in the room and what that'll do is that'll give you the processor like an ambient noise level. So once it reaches a certain threshold, you can adjust it to raise or lower the level or keep it at a certain level all the time. So that's handy tool there. Uh, Dugan Auto Mixer. <clears throat> this is if you're using, if you're not, if you're familiar with uh, Dugan Auto Mixers, these are used primarily for uh, boardrooms. Uh, anytime you have multiple microphones, uh, even if it's, let's say, for example, a um, like a on ESPN, when you have all the commentators and they're all together and they're talking, most likely they're probably using a Dugan auto mixer. So what that does is instead of having all these microphones on, your noise floor starts going high. And basically all you hear is just a bunch of hissing. So what this does is it helps keep it down to 
where it only sees one mic, but you have all these mics connected. So it basically lowers the level of the mic that's not being used and it, uh, you can give priority to a mic. So let's say if it's council chamber or something like that, then uh, you can give that mic priority. So it's always gonna override everything else. So that's Dugan Auto Mixer, it's pretty cool. MTX3 has four channels, MTX5 has eight, and the MRX7, which is open architecture, has uh, 24 channels. So, uh, all right, so that's our dynamics. Uh, so another little uh, tool, uh, tips and tricks that you can do is, let's say if on that microphone, you have some EQ settings, maybe you're using two or three of the same mics. Uh, and what you can do is you can either left mouse click and hold that and drag it over to the next. You notice the little plus sign. So now I just, I'm copying and pasting those settings onto the channel uh, adjacent. Another thing that you can do is you can also do right mouse click copy and right mouse click paste. So we've now copied all those settings on there. So again, just something to speed up your process, your workflow. The next one is gonna be our select tab, which is gonna select the channel that you wanna work with. Or if you're already in the settings, you can just click this tab right here. Uh, one of the things I learned when I was learning how to mix on a digital board, uh, the good thing about a digital board is that there's five different ways to do something. The bad thing about a digital board is there's five different ways to do something. So uh, just again, depends on your workflow, depends on how uh, your process is, your thought process is just gives you a couple different options. So uh, next tab uh, is going to be our on and off. So I'm going to reference this later, but this is important to remember. Uh, this is our input uh, on and off. So whatever you have plugged into the device, this is going to turn it on and off from there. So there's a couple different points and I'll explain that later. Um, this is going to be our fader uh, for our level. So if you're going to go level up, level down, basically you can just left mouse click and raise it up or down. If you right mouse click, you can set it to zero. If you right mouse click, you can set it down to infinity. Another cool tip, if you hold down the alt and you left mouse click the fader, you can automatically uh, set the levels to uh, zero dB or nominal. So again, uh, left, um, sorry, left mouse click and alt, the alt key on your keyboard. And that'll uh, get you there, so pretty handy. If you double click on the gray box, this is going to be where we label our inputs. So for example, in this application, we're gonna have our mic, uh, mic one. Uh, well, actually we're only using one mic, so it'll be mic input. So the same is gonna be for all the channels. <clears throat> now, uh, channel, uh, you have eight channels of uh, dynamics or feedback suppression. And then from there, from nine through 16, you just have dynamics and that's it. You have excuse me, you have your stereo bus input. So this is gonna be our RCAs on the back. Now remember, we have two stereo pairs. So we're gonna have stereo in one, stereo in two, left and right. And then our stereo three by default is going to be our um, SD card. So the SD card, uh, again, is for the, the CAN messages, stuff like that. So that's where that uh, goes in right here. Hey, hey Temo, uh, um, yes. this is Phil again. Um, if you could scroll up, I'm not sure we're all seeing everything that you're doing um, because the it looks like the presentation is a little oversized, at least on my screen, perhaps others. Um, so um, just just want to be aware of uh, that so that um, all your so that everybody could see what you're doing. Okay. Bill, I, I see I see the top of the menu though. Um, I see I see the tab Dennis Surf and Turf and Project. Is that the top demo? Yes. All right. I see it good on my. Okay. okay. Hopefully everybody else can too. In. I withdraw. Sorry okay. to break the rhythm. <laughs> hey, we're no just trying problem. to make sure that the presentation because this could be this could be complicated. Yeah. So uh, can you guys see the right side of the of the processor board? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, okay, so moving along. So we have our uh, we have our input. So we have our mic input. Uh, now in this application, we're going to be doing our BGM. So we're going to double click that, and this is going to be our BGM uh, left. And basically, BGM means uh, background music. For uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the terms, but uh, BGM uh, background music. And then this is going to be our like our uh, Direct TV box. So we're going to do uh, DTV left, and then we're going to do DTV right. Sorry, DTV 
right? So that's our DirecTV, and we're just going to leave this uh, by itself. So at this point, uh, we've covered all of our input channels. <clears throat> so now we're going to move on to the right side. Uh, if you scroll over to the right, sorry, uh, you also have FX returns, and what those are are basically uh, FX. So if you have a microphone or situation where you're plugging into, let's say, a karaoke bar, or maybe it's a bar that has karaoke in the afternoons or whatever, uh, or maybe you just need to add some uh, some uh, reverb onto that uh, that input, that microphone. We have two bus sends uh, that have the karaoke, or that have the, uh, the effects on them. So you can choose either one of those. Uh, we also, on the right of that screen, <clears throat> you have our wide if bus, or if you just have an input that just needs an on and off and a fader, we have an additional uh, eight channels here. So you have 17 to 24, and that's where you basically uh, can park any of those inputs. And same thing, you just click on the box on the top and you can select where it's gonna see that from. So, uh, all right, so that covers our inputs. Uh, anybody have any questions at all on anything I just covered? Timo, I did actually. When, yes. you, when you're cutting and pasting the EQ settings, and moving them across, very handy by the way. What if you wanted to go back to like channel one and then set it back to default? Uh, basically then you would either turn off the EQ or you uh, turn off the high pass filter. Uh, on the EQ, If let's say if you made some adjustments on here and you uh, tweak these out a little bit, you can just set it to press the flat, re reset EQ gains and boom, now they're reset. Okay. You but can does, do it, does it does the color change back to the default or does it look still look like it's custom? Oh, it, changes. Uh, it changes back. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. So, uh, and again, you can notice that now since we turned off that high pass filter on the mic, uh, that is not uh, highlighted anymore. So uh, let's go back in here. We're going to turn this back on. So, all right, great. So uh, moving along, uh, anybody has any questions at all? Uh, I don't see any questions. No, we're clear. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so let's move to the output section. So now the output section, uh, this is gonna be where our outputs are going out to our amplifier. So a uh, couple different ways you can use this. Let's say, for example, if you're using a amplifier that has all the DSP built in, then you can just use this as a straight output 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So the, the processor is gonna basically, I'm sorry, the amplifier is gonna do all the processing. So this would be, for example, if I'm gonna use this then uh, for a specific area, then I can just, uh, same deal, I can just label this, uh, what was it? Uh, dining room. So uh, let's call this dining room. Uh, now, let's say if we have specific outputs that we're setting up uh, certain speakers, which uh, we're going to cover those. Uh, again, uh, on the patching side, uh, you select the, uh, the patch tab and you can select where you want to send the signal out to. You can either use a drop down menu or you can use uh, the arrows on here. So that'll show you that. Uh, next tab is gonna be our gain output gain stage, our invert the polarity of the signal. Again, sometimes you need to invert it uh, due to the acoustics of the room. Uh, whatever the situation is, it gives you that option. Uh, this is probably one of the most powerful pieces in the processor. So you have, again, if you're using this as a straight output delay room EQ, uh, you can use that function. Uh, you have delay function here that's either millisecond, sample meter, feet. Uh, you also have room EQ. So again, uh, this is the output going to your speakers. So maybe those speakers, uh, you know, you want to just turn down the sub a little bit, the sub frequencies, maybe it's a little boomy in there, uh, or maybe you just want to bump up the highs a little bit. You can just grab any one of these points, uh, left mouse click, and then drag it up and down. Uh, or you can just finite uh, and tweak here. If you want to select a specific frequency, adjust the Q, whatever, you have a parametric EQ, you have shelf, uh, and high pass and low pass filters. So uh, that said, let's go to the speaker processor. So now let's say if we're using that output and we're gonna be feeding an amplifier uh, with different, uh, different configured uh, amp channels, right? So now if we're gonna be using that amp channel for a specific purpose, let's say for example, uh, ceiling speakers, we got a, a bunch of uh, VXE6s uh, or VXE4s or something, they're, they're ceiling speakers, you're gonna tune those differently than you would be tuning those like a surface mount speaker or sub. So uh, in this tab, we're gonna click advanced. 
And that's going to take us into this page. And here we can adjust the uh, crossover point. Uh, we can adjust the polarity. We can invert the polarity, mute the output. We can also set up our high pass filter shelf. Maybe we want to do a wide uh, slope, a 6dB slope, or maybe we want to do a sharp uh, 48. Uh, if you left mouse click, you can also drag and draw, I'm sorry, you can drag and uh, adjust the frequency. If we wanted to do, let's say, a bandpass filter, we just click on this side and then we can just lower the frequency here. So if we're doing a sub or something like that, so we can make those adjustments here on the crossover. Again, you have a parametric EQ built in that you can have all these different parameters and change all these settings. Uh, you have an output, you can mute the output, you can, uh, another point that you can raise and lower the level. Uh, you also have a delay on here for, uh, let's say if you're using delays uh, under balcony or you wanna delay your subs to your uh, sp uh, speakers, or maybe you have speakers in different levels, maybe the ceilings are higher in some points and you have different speakers there, you can uh, delay that as well. Uh, you also have a limiter. Another cool function is if you hit list, um, you can select any one of the Yamaha pre-installed library. And here has basically the whole catalog of, uh, or most of the speakers that we have in our lineup. So let's say for example, this is a, a ceiling speaker. We're gonna do, uh, let's say a VXC6 because that whole room is gonna have a bunch of uh, VXC6s. But let's say if it's a speaker from another vendor that you use all the time, uh, maybe you like uh, this setting right here, or let me see, we like this setting right here. Uh, if you go and hit uh, store, and you select there, you can label whatever you want. Now you notice I have a bunch of different speakers that I've done uh, through the years, uh, different trainings, different examples. But uh, let's say for example, you use a sound tube all the time. Uh, you can uh, save it as that. So every time you go and you use that particular speaker, you already have a, a setting built in that's stored to your local machine. So that way you can uh, recall that setting if you happen to use that setting all the time. So it's a huge, a tool to help you guys uh, speed the process along. Um, okay, so then we covered that part of it. Uh, then we go back over here. Uh, and again, same thing, if you left mouse click, you can do copy and paste functions. Uh, you just drag it over. Um, oops, let's go back. You can just drag over to the right and now we've copy and pasted those settings. So uh, again, uh, same thing like the other block, uh, all of these basically take you to the same uh, section. So a couple different ways, uh, do the arrows uh, on top uh, to select or you can press the select buttons and that'll toggle through all the different uh, output channels. So let's set these up. So for example, in our uh, application here, we're gonna do, uh, these are gonna be our patio speakers. So these we're gonna be using, uh, let's say uh, some VX, uh, we're gonna be using some surface mounts. So we're gonna be doing the VXS eights. And then let's say output three, we're gonna be doing a, a subwoofer in the area. So let's go and select a VXS 10S, which is our sub. Uh, so you notice that all the EQ curves have been put in and this is basically cooked up by our engineers in uh, Japan. So, uh, and they've compared this against you know, RTAs and stuff like that to see what the best sound that we can get out of that box. So uh, if we go back here, so let's go ahead and label these. So this is gonna be our patio speakers. Uh, this is gonna be our patio sub. And all right, so we got that done. So this covers the output section. Uh, so again, anybody have any questions at all at this point? Anybody? Uh, let me see, I don't see any questions here. Okay. So I'm assuming everybody gets uh, all this section. So you have our input section uh, and we have our output section, right? So now <clears throat> we're gonna go into uh, the matrix. Now. Something that I wanna note, uh, so that way, cause a lot of people get caught up on this part right here and how this works in the zone and the router. Uh, if we go into uh, our operation manual, um, this is basically gonna explain the uh, signal flow of the system and how it relates to. So if we take a look here, our main is basically gonna be this tab here, our inputs. So. Our inputs are gonna be right here. These are our physical inputs. These are, these are what you're gonna to connect to the unit. This is our input patch, which is the little box right here. 
uh, make sure everybody can see that. Our input patch, so this is where uh, you set this up right here. This is our input where all our dynamics. This is our matrix, so the inputs are gonna feed into the matrix. The matrix are gonna feed to the zone. The zone itself has its dynamics with the, uh, the Ducker, uh, paging function, stuff like that. And then we have the router. The router is gonna determine where you're gonna send what speakers to what zone or assign what speakers to what zone. And then our output, and then from there it goes out to our speakers. So that's how that whole thing relates. So again, these inputs right here, they feed into our uh, our matrix. So uh, if we go into there, so now this right here, think of this uh, row or matrix as our bucket. So we're gonna make these channels available to this zone or zone bucket, right? So if we go into our zone, uh, zone tab, um, I'm gonna cover this in a little bit, but uh, this is where we're gonna label our zone areas. So for example, this is gonna be our, uh, let's say our dining, and this is our dining zone, and this is gonna be our patio zone, okay? Now, if we go back to matrix, you're gonna notice that right here in this area, those tabs now have changed to whatever I labeled them. So it's gonna make it a little easier. Now, there's a couple different ways to assign uh, inputs to your matrix. Right now, all the boxes are green. That means that everything is going everywhere. If I right mouse click and I do matrix on or matrix off, this is basically the row right here. If I do channel on, channel off, this is gonna be my column. And if I do all on, this is gonna be the whole grid. If I do all off, that's gonna be the whole grid off. Now, this is basically how I like to start because now I can cherry pick and say, okay, my mic input, I want that to go into my dining zone uh, and my patio zone. Uh, my BGM, which is my background, I want that to go into the dining zone. Uh, and perhaps I want that to go into the patio. Or maybe I don't want that BGM going into the patio. Maybe I have something else like uh, the DirecTV. So the DirecTV, I want that also going to the uh, patio zone. So once I check this box here, then it's going to highlight and it's going to select that. So if I wanted the background music in that zone as well. So this is basically how you assign all of these, uh, any one of your channels right here and just scroll with the bar up here. So now we've assigned our mic, we've assi assigned this. Uh, also, I think we're gonna do some uh, messaging, uh, like some paging function. So we're gonna assign this in the matrix as well. So we have our BGM, which is our background. We have our DirecTV, we have our stereo in, which is gonna be our, I'm sorry, our SD card, which is gonna be our, our announcements. We've labeled this. Uh, and if you click on each tab and you notice they change color, they correlate with the different zones. So. Another thing that's uh, to note is, let's say if I needed to adjust the level of what I'm gonna send to this zone, maybe that microphone, I don't want it to be so hot. So if you notice, this is gonna be my fader and this fader is my main input that I'm feeding into the processor, my main source. Right now it's set to about a quarter way. If I lower this, if I left mouse click, notice the little box up here that uh, as I'm lowering this and raising it, the uh, level is gonna be up or low or up or down. Uh, basically that means how much you're feeding in, kind of like a gas gauge. So if you wanna go halfway, not that much or low level, then that's how you would, uh, this is basically our sense and I'll get into that and how this all ties in together later. But um, this is basically how our matrix works. And again, the matrix feeds the, the zone. So these are our zone areas. Uh, here is where you set up for a ducker. Uh, let's say, for example, if you're using, um, uh, in this case, we're gonna be using a, a SD card message, a CAN message. So we're gonna select our stereo in three, and that's gonna be our first priority. Meaning that if it detects any signal from here, whatever's playing in the background to any of the zones, it's gonna automatically duck that, and it's gonna play whatever I have as my priority source. Uh, it could be maybe a jukebox, uh, anything like that. And whatever input you want to interrupt uh, the signal, that's basically where you assign it here. Uh, you can adjust also the range threshold and all these other functions. Usually the whole time I keep it to about less than a second. Anything higher than that is just kind of like an awkward silence. So uh, again, you can play around with this and see what works better for you. 
Another thing I'm also gonna do is uh, maybe I have a microphone that I'm gonna select for paging. So in this case, it's gonna be our mic. Now, very, very important to note, if I'm gonna be using these sources as a uh, Docker source, then in the matrix, I don't wanna assign these because anytime, let's say if I have, uh, this is my microphone, anytime I'm using this microphone and if I have it assigned in the matrix to one of these zones, that means every time I turn this on, it's always gonna be hot. So if I'm gonna be using it as a paging source, I'm gonna turn these off because when I do the page, it's gonna see the source from this section here. So that's very, very important to note. Uh, and since we're going to be using the SD card as our message, uh, we're going to deselect that from here. Um, so that way it only gets the audio from here. That means if I, anytime I select this, it's always going to play in that area. And that's not what I wanted to do. So, uh, okay. So that covers matrix zone. Uh, now our router, <clears throat> again, uh, let's say we have uh, our outputs right here and this is how this relates. So these are gonna be my zone areas that I'm gonna assign my outputs to. So in this case, output one is gonna be my VXC ceiling speakers. So I'm gonna assign that to my dining area. Now let's say if I have uh, subs uh, or I have surface mount speakers in that same area, maybe these are gonna be my dining surface mounts and I'm gonna have these tuned differently then I'm gonna assign that uh, to the uh, to that same zone. So as you can see, you can assign multiple outputs to a single zone, but you cannot assign multiple zones to a single output. So if you notice that I can only select one zone per output. So uh, that's basically how that works. Um, in this case here, we're gonna assign output three and two in the same zone, which is gonna be our patio. So I'm gonna click on that box. So now I have my dining and patio uh, assignment already there. Uh, another handy tool that we have included in here is an oscillator. Uh, basically how that works is uh, you turn the oscillator on and let's say if you're testing uh, an output, uh, you're testing your channels to make sure that your uh, speakers that you ran are in that area that you are connected to the correct amp channels. So this is where you would use the oscillator. So you just click it on and off. Uh, you can select either sine wave uh, or pink noise. Uh, now, if you don't know what pink noise is, it's basically uh, kind of like that dead air noise that you get sometimes uh, on a TV channel uh, or a radio station when you're tuning in. The older radio stations, you hear that uh, shh, that static sound. That's basically pink noise. Uh, and why we use that in this application? Because if you use music, music has a lot of transient peaks and uh, valleys on the on the output on the audio. So if we want it to have something constant and and the same level that's where we use pink noise because it's a constant uh, output um, signal. So, uh, and then uh, we have our frequency adjust, our level, if we're gonna be using um, how loud or how soft we want this to be. And it's as easy as just selecting the output channel that you want to be, uh, to have on there. Now this function only works, uh, the oscillator only works while you're online with the device. So just to note that. <clears throat> um, Okay, so then we got our output, we covered that, our effect. Uh, DCAs, uh, this is handy uh, in case if you have multiple outputs uh, or inputs or zones, if we have these tied to one specific area. So let's say for example, if we have, uh, if we're using like in the council chambers where we have six different microphones and we need to adjust the level of the mics, we like where they're at, but we don't wanna to have to go in and adjust each mic individually. Uh, if you just go into here and you just select the mics that we want to have on our uh, DCA group, basically, let's say if it's a council chambers, if we just use this one fader, that means we're taking the level, no matter what position they are, we're taking that level and turning them down simultaneously at the same time. So that's where that comes in handy. Uh, same thing with the, uh, the input uh, with the mute. If you have uh, multiple inputs that you need to mute at the same time, uh, same thing, you just assign that to that group, uh, zone out. DCA, again, if you have multiple zones within the same space and you need, uh, let's say if it's a, a ballroom and you have uh, them broken off into ballroom A, B, C, and D, or zone A, zone B, zone C, zone D, 
then uh, you need to lower that whole level down because you just took out all the air walls. Now you can lower and raise the level simultaneously without having to go into each individual fader. So uh, mute works the same way. So uh, again, these are just uh, tools to have. You might not use them at every job, but it's, it's there and that's the functionality. Uh, IO tab, uh, in case if you need a pilot tone for uh, any reason, if you're sending a signal out for uh, an amplifier or a source needs to see uh, to turn on uh, anything like that, then that's where this comes in. It's set at 20 kilohertz uh, and you can also adjust the level. Now, 20 kilohertz, most likely, uh, unless you're a dog, you really, really can't hear that frequency. So you won't hear it in the, in the line. Um, and then if you have an MY4 acoustic echo cancellation card uh, installed, then that a parameter will pop up here. So, uh, okay, so at this point, uh, any questions at all? Uh, we covered our uh, patching, we covered uh, any of that. Uh, I don't see anything in the... Uh, We're on questions right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, so great. So here is we're going to do our patching. Uh, now on the widest side, you really don't have to mess with anything here because you've already done all your patching on this tab right over here. So uh, I usually don't use that for this section for there, but uh, if you're doing a Dante device, then you click edit and you click tab here. And this is where you would do simple one-to-one -one patching if you don't have to do anything crazy. Uh, then you can do it here. But if you needed to do something specific with Dante controller, then you just check this box here and let Dante controller do all the patch settings. Uh, if you're not familiar with Dante, uh, Dante controller, uh, I would suggest you go onto their site, audinate.com, and you can do at least your level one, uh, you can do level two and three off their site, but at least minimum get your level one certification. Because uh, if you start to notice, or if you start to search or Google, um, a lot of devices now are going to a Dante based uh, system because of the flexibility that you get with Dante enabled systems. Uh, again, uh, huddle rooms, Zoom, uh, a lot of the Zoom devices are coming with uh, Dante built in so you can send that audio to your processor. So again, uh, if you're uh, not familiar with Dante, I would highly recommend you go onto their site and uh, get familiar with it. So, uh, all right. That takes us to our uh, last tab, our XMV tab. So here is where we're gonna set our patching. So uh, just click on the edit box. If you notice, if it's not highlighted, uh, you're not gonna be able to click on any of these boxes to select your patching. So if you click edit, uh, now I can go into here and I can select what output I want to send to that amp channel. So remember, uh, if we have, uh, let's say an amplifier that has multiple runs of 70 volt speakers, you can patch all the channels the same way. So a couple different ways to do it is you can click on the box and uh, you can select output one. Uh, let's say if we're doing a huge space and we have a ton of 70 volt runs, let's say we have four runs, all of these amp channels can be set to output one. Uh, again, you can just either click close uh, or you can click on the box and do the drop down menu, select from there to select the patching or you can do the arrow left and right. So uh, in this case, we're gonna do uh, output uh, one is gonna be our speaker. Output two is gonna be our uh, next speaker. Output three or C is gonna be so forth and so on. So now we've done our patching. Uh, here, we can also label our, uh, our amp channels as well. So let's say if this is, uh, let's say this will be our patio. Let's say this would be our patio sub. I'm gonna click on that. Uh, maybe this is gonna be our dining room. So let's do that. Uh, so, I, uh, so basically that's how you would do that, do it that way. So um, you can also put the app, as long as you're online, you can put the app on standby or you can turn it on. Uh, now, another thing to note is the level. So by default, out of the box, the levels come to set minus 99 or basically all off. If I double click on that, I'm gonna hit minus, uh, let's say 30, cause that's a good place where I wanna start. Minus uh, 30 or 45, so it's not so loud when you uh, start feeding signal through it. So now when I go online to this device, uh, maybe right now I'm not using that channel, so I'll leave that off. Uh, again, double click, you can select the output. Uh, okay, so now we've done this, we've selected our patching, we selected our levels. 
we have our input devices set up. Uh, we have everything done here. We have our output channel set up. So everything is set up completely. Uh, now, uh, what we want to do is we want to assign our control. So let's say, for example, actually, let's save this as a preset first. So uh, if you click on the little camera icon right here, that's going to be your preset. And this is where we're going to take essentially a snapshot of the current state of the system. So if uh, or whatever we have this set to, that's going to be our preset. So in this case, we're going to click store and you can select up to 50 presets uh, to store uh, one of 50 presets that you can store. So in this case is going to be there. Uh, if you want to change that label, maybe it's a restaurant and you have different settings. It could be start. It could be whatever you want to label it. Um, all right, so now we've created our uh, preset and we're gonna close there. So now what we have to do uh, is we need to set up some control. So we're gonna go to our controller tab, um, which is gonna tell us right here, we have external events. If you have like a, a device via IP, let's say it's like a, um, a projector screen, it could be like those Lutron uh, panels that go up and down, it could be lighting, whatever you have, you can select through external events. Uh, and you can control it off of uh, DCP wall plate, our MCP1, or our pro uh, Provision Air app, which I'll get into in a bit. Uh, in this case, we're doing our uh, DCP, our digital control panel, <clears throat> and we're going to select here. The first one we're going to do is that's going to be our uh, SD announcement. So we're going to click uh, play, and we're going to play one song, which is going to be our Pickles special. Uh, let me see which I already have a pre-canned message in there. And then I'm gonna click okay. So every time I hit that button, it's gonna play that announcement. Uh, the next one I'm going to assign is gonna be our microphone on and off. Uh, now, again, there's two different ways to do this. Um, well, there's a couple different ways, but the main difference between MTX on it's, uh, and send on, it's gonna be this little button right here. Now, if you're using this input across multiple zones, then I wouldn't suggest you do MTX on through this way because basically every time you turn this button on and off, it's gonna turn that uh, input uh, globally on and off. So you're gonna turn it on and off from here, but if you're using that mic across other zones, it's gonna turn them off as well. If you do the send on, this is basically gonna kill the feed that's going from the matrix to the zone and that's how you're going to turn it off so it's not going to be here so uh that way you can use that microphone or that bgm or whatever source across multiple zones so in this case it's our send on our device our parameter and the specific zone that we're going to send it to uh in this case we're we got one zone that we're working with uh our next input is going to be our stereo one bgm now this is a cool thing that you can do with the uh, DCP. You can use it as a source selector. So I'm gonna do this as a MTX source select. And uh, there's three different positions on here. So you do your send on or your send level. In this case, we're gonna do the send on uh, for our specific zone, zone one. Now there's three positions where these buttons have uh, functions. So you have ignore, which is uh, whatever button you press, it's going to ignore that. You have on and then you have off. So in this case, we want to ignore these because we don't, uh, we're not using them. Uh, but we're going to do our BGM, which is our stereo in one, and we want to turn off stereo two. And then we're going to click OK. Uh, our next knob or button we're going to do is we're going to do the source select for our, we're going to turn this off. This is going to be our source select for our direct TV box. So that's going to be on and that's going to be off. So when we push uh, button number three, it's going to turn off button uh, number four and vice versa. So that way we can source select our inputs. Uh, so we're going to select that. We're going to click OK. And the knob, uh, we're going to assign that our level. So now again, this could be a input level. It could be this fader. It could be this fader. Uh, or it could also be our specific um, our zone. So in this case, we're going to do a send our level, and it's going to be our zone out level for zone one, and that's the zone that we're going to use. 
another thing that you can also select on here is you can select the range. So maybe if this is out in public view and you don't want them cranking this as, as loud as you can, you can set uh, just the limit either from, um, what do you call it? Uh, you can set it a, a upper limit, you can set a lower limit. So instead of it being all the way up here, now your range is down here. So they can only affect this range in this area and that's it. So it's pretty cool. Uh, also, you can adjust the sensitivity. Uh, you have a couple different options as well. So let's go ahead. And now if you have multiple DCPs, you can program all of your DCPs to one library. You don't have to do a separate library for each DCP. So if you have, uh, let's say if you have six uh, wall plates, each one's gonna do a specific function, then those are gonna do that function. You can program them all at the same time and save it under one uh, library and that's it. So we're gonna select that. Um, another thing to remember is that these are one trick ponies. So whatever you assign it to, that's what it's going to do. But if you're going to do, uh, you can also assign it to do a preset recall. Now, the only thing with the preset recall is you got to remember if you go into that preset, you got to select a preset to recall it back to where you had it. So let's say if you're doing it for, um, for a bar and it's like, uh, during normal hours, you have it set to, uh, you know, uh, minus uh, zero dB, which is nominal. And maybe when you're uh, playing uh, karaoke, you want to have it up three dB. You can do a preset like that. Maybe you want to turn off certain speakers, whatever the, 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 the situation is, uh, you can do a preset recall. But again, remember, you got to have a way to go back to your normal. So a couple ways you can do that is either programming a preset recall on the tab on the button or uh, doing wireless DCP or recalling it from the front panel. So uh, front panel is going to be a little bit more inconvenient because you have to keep going back to the processor. So it kind of takes away from the whole convenience factor. So you just got to kind of uh, figure out which way you want to go. Uh, so in this case, uh, we're going to save, overwrite, yes, anytime you make a change, you just click save and overwrite. Uh, you have up to 32 different uh, DCP libraries that you can program. So we're going to close that. Uh, and one more thing, we have our wireless DCP. Uh, this is either iOS or Android based uh, app that you can download for free off, our, uh, off of the Play Store or uh, the App Store. You have four different pages uh, that you can program uh, and you also have different templates that you can program as well. So let's say for example, this uh, again, we can mimic what we're gonna do. So this one we did, uh, one was our SD card play, play one song, which was our pickles special. So we can program that there. Uh, the next button is going to be our mic on and off. So we're going to do the send on for channel one, zone one. The next one is going to be our, let's say our stereo. Uh, we're going to do that send on. So this is going to be a little different than the, the source select. This is actually going to turn that source on and off. So let's say if uh, the, this could be the manager that has that level of control. So it just really depends what kind of control you want to give to the person. So, uh, and then this is going to be our send on for zone one for stereo two. And so now we've programmed, uh, let's just put here a label. This is going to be announcement. Uh, oops. It's going to be our announce. This is going to be our, what do we say, our mic. Uh, this is going to be our uh, BGM. And this is going to be our direct TV, DTV. And again, this is, uh, this can be the level for that. Uh, it could be the level or the send level. Uh, this, we want it to be the direct mic level. So we want to adjust that from there. Uh, this is going to be our uh, let's see. No, sorry, let me go back one. This was for the announcement. So let's do the send level for stereo three, actually the level for stereo three. Which on level, we're gonna do stereo three. So that's gonna be the level for our SD card for our announce. Uh, the next one is gonna be our send level, our direct level for our microphone. Uh, this one is going to be our level 
uh, for our stereo one. Now, again, remember, this is a manager level uh, assignment. So uh, you can do just regular level. So if you just want to have a setting for a customer, I'm sorry, for a, an employee, uh, it could be the, the supervisor or it could be the bartender, whatever. You, this is the level of control that you can set up. So, um, and then we're going to go ahead and label this. Uh, another thing that I wanted to mention is you can also do all your copy and paste uh, shortcuts that you normally would in... Uh, uh, in Word, Excel, Outlook, whatever you use, your copy and paste, Control A for Control All, Control C, Control B, you can use all those same uh, setups uh, on here. Uh, so again, same thing, we're gonna go and save that. So we're gonna save that to library one. So now we've got our announcement, our mic. Now remember, this is our direct mic uh, level adjust, our BGM adjust, uh, so forth and so on. So now uh, we go, we're gonna go back into our preset because now we wanna assign that DCP or we want to associate that DCP with that preset. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. Uh, we're going to click assign our DCP library and our wireless DCP library to that. Uh, we're going to click OK. And so now I have assigned here preset store overwrite. Yes. OK, so now we've done that. Now there's a couple functions on this page. Uh, well, first off, does anybody have any questions at all? Uh, any questions? I don't see any in the Q&A. No? Okay, good. So, uh, all right, so we got those uh, programmed. We have our inputs program, our outputs program. So now uh, we're going to uh, set this up. We're going to close that. Now we're ready to go online to our device. So if uh, you notice, I'm going to go online here. And I'm gonna to go to device because this is the device we've already written uh, our program, we've already written our controls and everything, and we're gonna send it to our device. So you're gonna click OK. So now we're gonna go online, and if you were able to see the devices, all the lights would be flashing on the front panel, and that's how you know that you're going online. So uh, previously, if you remember, none of the lights were on our DCP. Now, because we sent a command to it, now we have some lights and some functions. So uh, that's how you know. <clears throat> also, the buttons on here, now you notice that they just turn blue. So what that means is that now we're active online with the devices and uh, now we're communicating in real time with the devices. So again, green means you're seeing it, but you're not online. Blue means you're online and connected. So now uh, let's check our sources to see if we have uh, output. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna test our microphone. So we're gonna make sure, check, check. So now uh, if you notice that we're gonna see some level and uh, we're gonna see some metering right here, but uh, I don't know if you guys can hear, but the level is kind of low. So I'm gonna go and maybe turn this up on my gain. Uh, so if you notice on the metering, we have metering there. So now you guys should be able to hear me coming out of the speaker. Uh, so uh, yeah, we can we can hear that. Okay, great. Or you, or you can go drastic and put a delay on there or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> so all right, so we got our output on our mic. So check, uh, that's working. So we're going to just uh, dial that back a little bit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to check our stereo inputs. So uh, if I go here, if you see the little green dot, that means you're seeing a signal. So here we're gonna test our BGM. Uh, now you notice we're not getting any output. Why are we not getting output? So let's check our matrix. Uh, we got zone one, uh, we're, let me see, maybe we're in between songs. Oh, there we go, it's just a little slow. So you guys can hear that. Oh, I know why, because we set up our ducker. Let me turn that off. So let me go back to zone. Let's turn this off for right now. Uh, okay, so now uh, we have output. If I go back here and I raise this, you guys hear uh, the level go up and down, right? Yep. Okay, so that's working. So now let's test our DirecTV. So we hear audio there. So basically I got a ball game on, uh, on a loop. So we can hear the audio. So that'd be the same thing as DirecTV. 
And then uh, our SD card, we can't hear anything on that yet. So let's go ahead and we're gonna test our button to make sure that we have that working. So if I push that, uh, I see metering, but I don't see anything on the output. Why? Because in the matrix, I don't have it assigned. But if I click on here and I push the button again. Attention shoppers, we've got a blue light special for the next 30 minutes. One quart jars of dill pickles are 49 cents. All right, so we heard that, right? Mm -hmm. So now, uh, okay, so now I'm going to go back here and I'm going to turn this up a little bit. And I'm going to turn this off real quick so you guys can hear me. So if I go back in a zone, I'm going to set up my uh, ducker. So uh, now I'm going to turn this on. So now this is going to be my priority source is going to be my uh, SD card, right? So if I go back here and I turn this back on and I push the, uh, the button. Attention shoppers, we've got blue light special for the next 30 minutes. One quart jars of dill pickles are 49 cents. All right, so you guys hear the ducker? That's how it yeah. activates. So what's nice about the ducker is not a hard fade. It's an actual nice ramp in, ramp out. So let's test out the other functions of our uh, DCP wall plate. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this back on. I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to toggle through our sources because we did our source select and this is our zone adjust. So, uh, and then this is going to be our microphone on and off. So let's go ahead and turn that on. So that's our level. This is our source select. Oh, let me turn up the uh, DirecTV source. So if I toggle through this. Now you notice the change. So that's, this, that's how the source selector works. So that's pretty cool function. Uh, and again, you can have it set up. So it's basically uh, a direct uh, level adjust, a zone adjust. There's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, and then uh, let's go ahead and test the ducker on the microphone. So let's say if we're gonna use the microphone for a, um, what do you call it? Uh, for paging, for announcement, stuff like that. So I'm gonna turn the ducker back on. I'm gonna turn our audio, check. Let me see, hold on. All right, so, so check one, two, and then uh, as soon as I'm done with the page, then it's going to go back and basically gonna put the program back on. So every time I talk, the doctor kicks in, lowers the volume, uh, Mr. Dennis, your pizza's ready, uh, please, uh, your table's ready, whatever, and then I uh, turn off the mic. As long as I've got that. So that's basically how the Ducker works, uh, how our microphone works, how everything works. So uh, basically up until now, uh, we're at what, uh, an hour? Let's say about we're in about an hour. We've already programmed our inputs. We've programmed our outputs. We patched everything. We set up our Ducker, uh, our sources, and we've done this walking through at a snail's pace to explain everything to you guys. Uh, in little over about an hour. So now imagine if you're on site and you're going through this whole thing, uh, you already have everything set up. Once you have all your cables connected, everything ran and everything's patched in, uh, it's as easy and simple as doing all of this function. So um, right now, like I said, we're about an hour in on the programming side and we've pretty much covered um, pretty much almost everything. So. A couple little things to go over. Um, let's see, uh, on the XMV, now remember if we do a, uh, a preset and we save a preset, it's gonna store whatever that current state is. So for example, if I go and I recall this at uh, minus uh, 50, and I go here to minus 50, and I'm gonna save that as uh, preset two, store uh, preset two. So now uh, another thing important is now we don't have any library assignments. So if uh, you notice, I just saved that. Now all my lights on my DCP are off because I don't have any assignment to that. So if I go ahead and I assign those DCP libraries. So now 
I just assigned that. And since we're live with the processor, it's automatically going to update it. And this should light up in a few minutes. So if you notice, uh, uh, or maybe we got to go back offline and online. But basically, it's as simple as that. So uh, we're going to click on that. We're going to close. So now if you do the drop down here, uh, that's a uh, preset one that we have. Now, remember, we have the level set differently on the amplifier. So we go to start is going to recall and it's going to change the levels back to where it should be. Now on the preset, uh, anything can be a preset. Basically, if I go here and I do that, I can save that uh, and create a new preset. So anything can be a, a, a recall preset. Uh, that can be a preset. That can be a preset. Uh, this can be a preset. So any of these, uh, any changes, anything you make or add on can be a preset basically. So uh, that's the beauty of it. You have up to 50 that you can do. Another thing, uh, in case if you're using, uh, if you have an application where maybe you have uh, an emergency alert system, a sprinkler system, something like that, uh, and you need to tie that into your system, uh, you also have that function as well. So usually uh, what we want to do is we want to set that up uh, preset number 50. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select that. Why? Because it's always, uh, it's all the way at the bottom of our chain. So if somebody goes in and accidentally recalls that, uh, it's, you know, it's going to be a mess. So we don't want that to happen. Uh, so let's say 50, that's going to be our store. That's going to be our uh, emergency. Uh, that's our emergency preset. <clears throat> and now let's go ahead and set up. So maybe for that emergency preset, we want that to be, uh, hold on. Okay, so we want that to be uh, basically all the outputs to be off or we can go into the amp and basically mute the amp channel. So if we go here, if you click on the box right here, the gray box one more time, uh, this basically is a shortcut to overwrite or to save to that preset. So we're gonna hit click yes. So now this has been saved as our emergency preset. So every time that recall or that preset is recalled, it's going to automatically mute uh, whatever we have. So if I click on here and hit start, you notice now the mute goes away. If I go and I hit emergency, it mutes all the amp channels. Uh, again, it's just your preference, however you want to do it. If you want to turn off the outputs on the uh, processor, basically these outputs over here, if you want to turn these off, that could be your preset, turn these down. However you want to set it up, that can be your preset. Uh, if you go into, uh, all right, so that's our emergency system, our emergency preset. Now, you can also, uh, right here on the bottom, uh, emergency recall, you turn that on, and you can select what preset is going to be our emergency preset. In this case, since we already set up 50, then that's what that's going to do. So every time it recalls or goes into that emergency mode, it's going to display an E. And basically all the functions on the panel or all the functions are going to be basically bypassed and it's going to be whatever that emergency preset is. Uh, and then once it doesn't see that preset trigger anymore, then it's going to default back to the uh, whatever state it was in. So that's how that works. Uh, on the GPI side, uh, let's go offline. On the GPI side, um, we're going to go and set up under GPI. And these are our ports on the back of the unit. So by default, channel 16 is for emergency in. So if I click on that, I do my emergency in. And now I can select either high active or low active, meaning if it's a ground or if it's a positive trigger, that's how that's going to work. Uh, and that's how it's going to see the trigger. And it's going to recall it and put it in that mode. A uh, couple other the functions that we have on here, uh, we have our uh, network setup, device information. This is pretty uh, useful. Uh, if you want to update the firmware, you can update the firmware from here, set IP addresses if you need to do something specific. Uh, you can do it that way. Uh, here you can see the type, the device name, the IP address, the MAC address serial number, the version of software that it's on, firmware that it's on. Uh, there's an internal battery, uh, also tells you if it's okay. Um, and then we click close. Next tab is gonna be our match devices by IP. Uh, if you had an MRX7 or an architecture DSP, then you would install the speech privacy file from here. Uh, now this is a handy tool right here. So for example, if our inputs, 
Uh, if we have, uh, let's say for example, uh, a DJ input or something that we need an XLR left and right, if you go on to signal type right here uh, and you select, right now by default, it's on mono times two. If I hit stereo and I click okay, now these two faders have become uh, basically under one fader control. So your dynamics, everything, they basically just got merged. So instead of having two separate faders to adjust, now you have one fader. The only caveat to this is they have to be perpendicular to each other. So you can't have channel one, channel five. It has to be one, two, three, four, five, six, so forth and so on. Uh, another useful tool is if you're using, let's say if you have four direct TV boxes and they're all RCA outputs or you're using BGM sources with RCA outputs. Now, instead of having to cut the RCA ends and having to feed them into and use up your mic line inputs, if you hit uh, mono times two on the stereo, if you notice right here, now our, uh, sorry, now our stereo bus, our BGM left and right, has now turned into uh, mono. So the back of the unit, now those left and right, the red and uh, white RCAs have now been turned into mono. So you just get an RCA adapter, a female, two females to a male, you plug in your source and then you plug that to the back of the unit and now you have four mono unbalanced RCA inputs that you can uh, individually select and change. So that's pretty huge. Uh, what else? Uh, MTX config. Um, you can also do it on the output side. If you needed to do uh, a two-way output, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, the matrix busing setup, if you wanted to break these up or have one uh, matrix uh, bus combined, you could do that as well. Uh, so you have a ton of different functions and settings. Uh, what else? Uh, Dante information. Uh, if we have a Dante devices, this will basically tell you everything on here. Uh, this is the same information, by the way, you would see in Dante controller. So uh, what else? We got uh, clock, uh, daylight savings time, scheduler. Uh, this is really huge. Uh, this function here allows you to add certain functions uh, to the processor. So you can do a GPI out. Let's say if you need to turn lights on and off, uh, close of day, uh, maybe put uh, amplifiers in standby, whatever. You can do it that way. Uh, maybe it's a retail location or restaurant. You can do an SD song card uh, play. Uh, you can recall, uh, let's say if it's um, closing time or in 15 minutes we'll be closing, uh, or maybe it's a store and they pre-program all their messages. They could do uh, uh, the daily specials, whatever it is, you can do the uh, song and play, or it could be a paging. So any one of these functions that you can do, let's say it's a preset recall, uh, and you select what preset you want it to do. Maybe it's the, the start. Uh, you can change the color on the scheduler. So if I open this, uh, I can select the date, the time that I want it to be on. If it's a repeat event, maybe I want it to do either yearly, monthly, weekly, daily, hourly. Uh, if there's an exception, uh, it could be maybe day of the month. Uh, maybe if the exception I want it to be uh, uh, certain uh, days, uh, I don't want it to be. Maybe I don't want it to be uh, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, if it's a daily event, uh, we can select that on, on the exception that you can select the day that you don't want it to, to do. So let's say if we just want to be, uh, you know, Saturday and Sunday, whatever, then you just add the exception. So that's a simple uh, setup right there. Uh, so we covered the scheduler. What else? Uh, let's see. Uh, the GPI, uh, remote control. This is if we need to uh, remote control from an output port. That's how you would set that up. Uh, the view, you can do large scale view. If you have one of those PCs that shrink the, the view all the way down, uh, you can do it that way. Controller, again, we covered all of these. Uh, wireless DCP, MCP1, if you're doing the, the digital wall plates, uh, if you have a PGM1, this is where you would program it uh, about. You have uh, some shortcut keys that really don't explain all the ones that I covered. Uh, you also have the operation manual, which is basically uh, what I covered, which is the block diagram. Uh, also the YDIF, uh, this shows you the block diagram for the YDIF uh, and the PGM1 uh, component sourcing. So it uh, just gives you some uh, more explanation of how that works and what that does.
Uh, aside from that, um, I'm not sure if anybody has any uh, any other questions uh, as far as the software goes. I don't I don't see any any. I, but now we you know with the with the a nice tight group that we've got. Um, I'll, I'll I'll call you guys out. Hey Doug, Michael, Robert, Tola, uh, you've been through 90 minutes and boy that is great job, Timo. So fantastic. I mean, it, 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 possibilities are endless. Like you said, you know, it's like that's that's the one issue with digital. You know, you can do it twenty different ways. Yeah. Right. But um, gentlemen, guys who are on this uh, uh, webinar, any anything that we can do? I'm curious. You know, uh, are you at this stage? Is this something that you're entertaining for a job coming up? Uh, feel free to hit us up. I mean, now's the time. I got a cue yeah. here. So a couple of things that I forgot to mention, uh, we got uh, a couple other ways of control. So we have uh, provision air control, which is iOS base uh, or PC with, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, provision air control off of Windows. So you can also do, uh, now the difference between this and uh, wireless DCP is that this is an open canvas, a blank canvas. So you can uh, set up any one of the buttons to control anything. Uh, you can import a graphic in here. You can, uh, anything you wanna do, you can control from here. Um, also the uh, wireless app, the wireless DCP, let me show you guys, since we did set that up, uh, I'm gonna go into wireless DCP. So now it's searching for the uh, processor. Uh, so as soon as it finds it, now it has to be in the same network. So once it finds it, so now it found, if you guys can see this, it found our MTX5. We're going to click on it. Uh, then we're going to hit join. So now um, I'm going to hit page. Oh, you know what? Probably I didn't assign the wireless DCP, but basically all our functions would pop up right here. So again, uh, this is a great handy little app that you can download for free off our website. Uh, then uh, from there, uh, you have a slew of different uh, setups, uh, different configurations. Again, provision or control, provision or touch, wireless DCP, MCP1. Uh, we also have third party control through either AMX, Crestron, Extron, or RTI, which I know uh, Volitone carries. Uh, and I believe Snap AV does too, right, Gary? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, software solutions, we have MTX, MRX Editor. We also have this handy tool online, which is basically our speaker layout software. If you have a bigger venue, we have our uh, Yamaha System Simulator software and the LAN monitor software that I touched on earlier. So again, um, thank you very much for, uh, for being on today with us. I know it's kind of early if you're on the, on the uh, West Coast. If you're on the East Coast, again, thank you for carving out this time. Now we're here, as Gary mentioned, to help you guys. So if you have any questions on design assistance, uh, design requests, uh, technical support, maybe you're on the job site, you have some issues, whatever, uh, we're here to support you. So uh, we have a few other uh, gentlemen as well that, um, that can help you on the design assist. So uh, again, uh, Q&A session, open forum now. So if you guys have any questions, uh, anything. Uh, Robert had one. Um, I don't know if you answered that with when you were talking about the PC or Mac, but is the editor software available for both? Uh, software is only available for PC. Um, right now, I haven't been informed or any changes to uh, add in uh, for Mac, but if you're using a Mac, you can use Parallels and run it that way. Um, so. um, he also had another question, Robert did, um, as far as uh, password protection uh, uh, from the controller standpoint, um, uh, you know, in order for them to protect it from making any changes in the hands of everybody else. Yeah, so basically, uh, there's a couple things. Now, when you set up the file, when you set up a program, let me go back into uh, uh, editor. When you set up the, uh, the file, now this, um, the customer doesn't have to see this at all. So once you set this up, once you program this uh, and send it to the processor, that's it, you're done. You don't have to do anything else. You don't even have to have a computer attached. Basically, this is the marching orders that the general is going to give to the processor and everything else attached to it, and that's it. So the level of control you want to give the customer is up to you. So if you're doing a, a DCP, basically all the buttons that I programmed on here, all the functions I set up here, that's the only thing it's going to do, and that's it. Um, so you basically assign what functionality you want. Now on here, if it's in public view, you can also set it up. So let me go in here. If you go into DCP, um, you can set up, oh, that's why, because we were in a different, uh, let's go back online. 
We were in a different uh, preset. That's why they didn't come up on the wireless DCP. We were on the emergency one. Um, but basically, if you press and hold, uh, I think it's button number one, uh, that's going to wake up. So not everybody's going to know that you press and hold button one on a DCP. Uh, on an MCP one, we have uh, a couple different levels that you can do. You can do either pin level. Uh, let's go ahead and recall start. You can do pin level adjustment uh, on a wall plate, or if you do the iOS app, you can also do it that way. So um, let me go back into wireless controller. Uh, now we're under the right preset. So, uh, and the wireless controller, you can also set up the uh, a pin so you can do uh, different users. Uh, you have an admin user and a regular user. So now we go ahead. So here, I don't know if you guys can see this, but you can select a uh, pin number if you want. Uh, by default, it always asks you that. So now, uh, if you notice, now the buttons are there. So now I can just go here and I can just uh, click on one of the faders. Now you can hear the music playing. So that's how that works. Uh, and again, this is all downloadable. So this could be for the user, it could be for the supervisor, it could be for whoever. So the level of uh, control you're basically giving them. The only thing I would add as a rule of thumb is in the control room, I would probably do either this one or the 4V4S just as a fail safe. So something happens, maybe it's a microphone, whatever, just as a fail safe, you have that in the control room. But um, basically, yeah, that's how that, well, you could do different levels, so. Um, any other questions? One more here. Robert's just saying thank you. All right, guys, so uh, Michael and, and uh, Tola and Doug, listen, you're gonna get an email from me Let's continue the dialogue. You've got the best in the business right here for you guys. There's nothing that you can't uh, get, get exposed to out there that includes distribution of audio and so many different designs that we cannot help you with, all right? So from, uh, from all of us, we're gonna reset. We're gonna render the video. We will be back in what, four hours? We got a 1, 1 p.m. West Coast. That's uh, 4 p.m. East Coast today. So if you toss it to one of your team members, you want them on this uh, later on today, we'll be here, okay? Um, Okay, Timo, great job, guys. Thank you for my invisible panel, the other two Timos that are in, in back of you. And we'll see you a little bit later on today. Let's brave the heat. De or, there's Dennis there. Thank you. Dennis, anything to wrap this up? I mean, you're obviously West Coast support. Um, mm -hmm. Out there, anything that you can lend yourself to? I, I love the fact that Snap is very involved um, with us in, in this endeavor, as well as you being, you know, independent in your own development and all that stuff. It just helps all of us understand uh, and and get those cues around and, and, and again, get that support when it's under the same umbrella like that.